Hi everyone, this is Jason here from Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, we are going to talk about just one chord, the dominant seventh chord, this one. Okay, and I have 10 approaches which will help you really understand the purpose of this chord, train your ear, thus train your ear to acknowledge, okay, this is what the chord can really do and uh, also improve your theory. So in this two-part lesson series, I'm going to take the dominant seventh chord and look at 10 ways in total, five in part one, five in part two, 10 ways to kind of train your ear and your theory to be aware of the sound of that chord and what it does for music, all the scenarios it can be used. And in my opinion, I think this is the most important chord in music. Yes, you have major, you have minor, but music does not have the ebb and flow, the tension, the re resolution, the, the release and the anticipation, you know, uh, if you don't have this chord. And this chord is probably the oldest chord along with major and minor. You would have major, you would have minor, and then you have this one, which is the dominant seventh. So I just want to share with you how I use this chord and how you can train your ear and hopefully use these approaches to, yes, first of all, train your ear. It's primarily a ear training awareness lesson. Uh, but also, well, you have to train your theory. So if you uh, stick around, the theoretical concepts will also be super useful for you guys to try out. And there, there are a lot of piano things also along the way. So it's a very three-dimensional way of looking at it. As I use this term very often, 3D. Theory, ear training and technique all in one. So that's what this lesson is going to do. Uh, just like pretty much all of our YouTube lessons. So... Before we get started, it'll be great if you could hit that subscribe button. There's a bell which you could hit for notifications and let's get cracking. Right, so the first way of studying the dominant seventh chord is to use it and apply it in what we call as the authentic cadence or the perfect cadence. So the perfect cadence or the authentic cadence is nothing but a five chord going to the one chord. Okay, so the five is built from a scale. So if I have the G major scale for you as an example, G is the one, D is the five, G, A, B, C, D. One, two, three, four, five. So D becomes the five. And the five chord forms what we call as a primary dominant chord. So it's a seventh chord or the only seventh chord which exists in the major scale. So that's why I guess they call it the primary dominant. And the primary dominant, which is in this case D seventh because D is the five of G, has this magnetic attraction or this pull, this strong pull to the tonic chord. And the tonic we say is one. So the D seventh tends to want to go to G major. So I've written it here, D, F sharp, A, C, which is the notes of D seventh resolves to G major, which is G, B, D. And you may be observing how I've written it in a circle. The reason being inversions. You don't have to necessarily play the chord this way all the time. You can invert it or this or this. Okay. So why I've chosen this cadence or so this authentic or the perfect cadence because it's the most obvious way to actually use the dominant seventh chord. So what I would hope when you're listening to a song is you identify this cadence. Some people think that you have to identify one chord and <clears throat> Uh, you should have that skill to identify one chord. But my advice for you is rather than think of it as one chord and put so much of pressure on yourself, make it about two chords or three chords or four chords, which are all part of a very, very common used to cadence and we've talked about cadences so much on this YouTube channel. Just go to our channel, type cadences, you'll get a lot of stuff, a lot of information on the topic. So let me just break this down for you on the piano and also let's look at a little bit of the ear training involved and all the skills you may need to develop along the way while learning and practicing the authentic cadence. So if you take D seventh, you can build that seventh as a major chord plus a dominant seven. So that's D, F sharp, A, C. 
and that seems to go to D G B. So D F sharp A C D G B. That's what we call as the authentic cadence. Now there are two notes which make this cadence really magnetic. You know, so you go D F sharp A C. The C tends to really want to go to the B. So, but you could also think of it as. So I would urge you to practice it in two ways. One is stick the four up on top. Actually, try and sing that. So four going to three, and then you could also do la seven going to one because the seven is very close to one. So so that will be A C D F sharp, which is still D seventh going to B D G. Right. So this should give you a very good way of using the dominant seventh chord. Train your ear. Try to remember what did I say? Move that four to the three. Practice that. That's where you have your half step motion on the piano, and then practice moving your seven going to the root. Or the tonic, or the octave, you could say, and this is a very strong cadence, very popular, very common cadence. Practice it well, and use the circle of fifths. The circle of fifths pretty much gives you the fifth. So you could resolve the five going to one by just drawing the circle, staring at it, and resolving. Okay, all the best with that. Let's move on to the second way which I have for you to learn the dominant seventh chord and really drill it inside your brain. Right. So in the second demonstration of the dominant seventh chord, I wanted to plot out all the seventh chords of the major scale. So if you look at it, and I'm trying to take different major scales for this lesson, so we don't just stick on one. And I've actually written it down for you. So you may want to get a copy of these notes. It's available on our Patreon. And uh, yeah, for a subscription, you'll not only get this stuff for this lesson series. You'll get it for every single lesson I will ever do and have ever done in the past for a couple of years at least. Okay, and we will prefer the same platform because most of the lessons have my handwritten notes as well as MIDI files in some cases, backing tracks which you could check out. So, I have written down the D major scale here, and I've written it down using seventh chords. Okay, now the seventh chords of the major scale are one major seventh. Two minor seventh, three minor seventh, four major seventh, five dominant seventh, six minor seventh, and seven minor seventh flat five, also known as a half diminished chord. Now, why I wrote this stuff down is to show you that there is only one dominant seventh chord in the scale, which is there, which is diatonically there in the particular scale. The rest would probably form other dominant seventh chords, which we call as secondary dominants. So if you take the D major scale, its first chord or its one chord ends up forming a D major seventh chord, whose formula is one three five seven. So that will be D major with the major seventh. What is that? C sharp, and that makes it diatonic. So to me, the major seventh chord just feels very relaxing and a lot more stable than its counterpart, dominant seventh chord, which is that. Now this is always asking the question: Where do I go next? Right. So. When you are in the D major scale, a good way to play around with this chord or this contrast is to play the one major seventh or start with the one, 
and then see what the one dominant seventh will do. In this case and in all cases, the one dominant seventh is the five of the four chord. So the D seventh in this case is the five of this G major. So when you use D dominant seventh or D seventh, it will resolve to G major seventh. While when you use D major 7th, it's a very different flavor. It will pretty much stay resolved. So in this approach of you digesting the sound of the dominant 7th chord, my recommendation would be practice D major 7th and observe it as a more stable entity. While the D dominant 7th is actually a chord which comes outside the D major scale but resolves to a chord within the D major scale. In this case, the G major 7th. We call this the 5 of the 4. This is how I write it, 5 or 4. It's also called as a secondary dominant chord. Um, we've done a very, very detailed set of lessons on the secondary dominant chord using a bunch of song examples. So uh, watch those YouTube lessons as well. Okay, and just to play around with it, I just thought I'll pick a song, you know. So if you take Falling in Love with You, you, uh, you take Wise Men Say so what did he do there? He did Y, D major, F sharp minor 7th, D minor 7th, and then only fools rush in. Now, wise men say. See, this is where you can actually squeeze in the D dominant 7th, which has a completely different purpose and a completely different function than the wise men say. These are all your tonic chords, very stable. Wise men say. But, oh, that's the dominant. Oh, only fools rushing. at the chords we've written it down there so where i actually have that contrast in this song wise men say you're still playing a d so you're starting with a d major seventh which is a very resolved start and then going to f sharp minor b minor and then only i'm sneaking in a, a four of the a five of the D major or D dominant 7th is the 5 of the G. Okay, so this is another way I would like you to practice what I've called as 1 major 7th versus 1 dominant 7th. In conclusion, the major 7th is diatonic, it's part of the scale, while the dominant 7th is coming <clears throat> into a chord from the scale. So it's an unstable entity. And it resolves, especially when you do the one major seventh, compare it with the one dominant seventh, you'll find that the dominant seventh chord resolves to the four major. In this case, G major seventh, I've chosen the key of D. So this is another nice way to train your ear and your theory brain to really get acquainted with the dominant seventh chord by contrasting it with its major seventh chord. Moving on. So the most common or the most popular way you'll find probably of using the dominant seventh chord is in our favorite genre, the blues. The blues pretty much started it all in terms of contemporary music. It's inspired arguably every genre in the past, I don't know, 100 odd years. Now what happens with the 12 bar blues? It's a very standard progression. It's one and then it goes to the four, so I'm on the key of B flat, B flat major two flats, so this is your one, then we go to the four, 
E flat and then the 5 which is F. So 1, 4, 1, 5. So the 12 bar blues progression is pretty much going to use the 1 chord, the 4 chord and the 5 chord for its work. Now the formula or the, the progression will be Roman 1 going to Roman 4 back to Roman 1 and then you stay on Roman 1 demonstrated by these dots and then you go to Roman 4 stay on Roman 4 and back to 1 and then you go to 5 and then back to 4 back to 1 ba -da -da -da, 5 Okay, now in some cases they kind of ignore the 4, they just repeat the 1 throughout. Uh, that's also quite common. In some cases they just continue the 1 here, that's also common. But you get the idea, right? The entire 12 bar blues framework is based on dominant 7th chords. And here they are not really used in a resolving manner. It's just used to bring up that idiomatic vibe of the blues, which is characterized by the dominant 7th chord. Yes, there are a lot of other things which characterize the blues scale, uh, like the blues genre, like the scale. You know, you have the blues scale, you also have the swing rhythm. Ta -ta -ta. Right? Now, we have covered a lot about blues. We've even made a playlist on our YouTube channel. Check out our playlist and you'll find a lot of videos on uh, all the way from beginner blues to something more intermediate and funky and all of that. Now, just to show you again, you play your 12 bar blues with dominant 7th chord. So I'm going to recap that. B flat 7th. So I'll just do each chord four times, four crotchets in a bar. So one, one, B flat seventh, one, one, and then I go to the four, four again, back to one, one again. And then the five, which is F, a four, which is E flat, and one, if you want. So the blues is another great way to digest the sound of the dominant seventh chord. So if you're watching this video and you haven't heard too much of the blues, start listening to a lot of blues artists like B.B. King. Um, uh, John Mayer plays a lot of blues. If you like him, you can listen, or you can listen to Ray Charles, who's a great piano player who plays blues and jazz. So many blues artists. So start listening to the blues. It's a great genre. It's really inspired so many people, including me, of course, moving forward. Right, guys? So the next way to showcase dominant seventh chords would be in a line cliche movement, as we call it popularly. Now, you could either look at a descending line movement or an ascending line movement. Now, all that's happening is the bass notes are going to move ascending chromatically or descending chromatically. So if you see the chart here, I've written down C going to C major 7th, going to C dominant 7th, then going to F major. And what's going to happen here at the upper range of the notes, you have the C and then going down to B because B is part of C major 7th. C is part of the C major triad. Ta -da 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 -da. C major 7th. 
and you kind of compare that line drop that line uh, chromatic drop of course you can continue so many songs you all know something by the beatles and um, yeah so what happened there we went this descending line let me demonstrate that with the bass on the keyboard so you as a keyboard player can drop your pinky to the major 7th and then you go dominant 7th eventually c 7th would resolve to the 4th of the scale which is f major so now the dominant comes up so on. we'll just take that for now now the that was the descending line cliche movement you can also consider the ascending line cliche movement which is a chromatic ascend now how does that happen with these chords i start with c major now i do a a major which is actually like an a7 but with a c sharp bass see c sharp is anyway part of the chord right so c major c sharp and d major you can keep climbing this actually b with d sharp bass e resolving to e minor or e major so this is an another nice way of practicing the dominant chord because every middle chord in this climb will be basically the dominant chord so a over c sharp is actually a dominant chord hidden because it's a 5 of this one it's still like a it's still a 5 of the d or d's 5 is a so that seems to pull itself really strongly to to d so Line cliche is another really nice way to explore the sound of the dominant seventh chord, or just the dominant chord in general. The five going to one in that fashion. You're in in the descending movement. You do C B B flat A. Na, 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 na. Very good songwriting tool. So many songs do that, or you can climb. La, da, de, 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 de. lot of artists do either right so that was the line cliche usage of the dominant seventh chords all of these methods which i'm trying to convey to you are ways to really use this in a songwriting manner but also train your ear so whenever you're faced with a dominant seventh chord you know exactly how it sounds and you also know what to do with it in what scenario can you use it or just have as many options as possible it's a very It's a beautiful chord and a very important chord. So please learn it well. Let's move forward. Two, three, four. Right guys so the next way of using the dominant 7th chord is in the dorian scenario or in the dorian scale so the dorian scale basically is a major scale you form it by taking a major scale flatten the third uh, raise the sixth with respect to the natural minor as we say or you can just say normal sixth major sixth and flatten the seventh so i've used e flat for our example there we go E flat Dorian right there. Okay, E flat, F, G flat, A flat, B flat, C. Don't do B. That'll make it natural minor. 
C D flat E flat Now how the scale is generally formed is if you build triads you're going to end up with a one minor and then if you jump to the four instead of getting a four minor which you get in the minor scale you will be getting a four major so there's a one minor and a four major okay first digest this dorian sound 1 to 4 that's one minor to four major there we go and so on so what's interesting to note that when you do the four it will be a flat c e flat and then you you climb for the do 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 it's actually a dominant seventh chord so your one is a minor seventh and your four is actually a dominant seventh chord so if you practice the dorian combo which is one minor seventh na 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 four dominant seventh it's another nice way to digest the sound It's the idea. And I've developed like a nice turn around at the end, which is again two dominant chords. That's B dominant. ending with a b flat 7th which is the five dominant of e flat so anyway we'll take you back to the e minor 7th and you loop it you can keep doing this one minor four dominant B so B would be like your six flat there we go six flat sliding down to the five seventh all seventh chords see it sounds very different if you change the quality of the four almost sounds wrong the doesn't sound wrong it's just a very different sound it doesn't at all belong to e flat dorian isn't it so if you use the dorian scale and just play this progression 1 turn around which is the b b flat you can play it in a funky way you realizing quite a few songs which use this very funky and uh, as you can see 
you tend to get carried away when you play this particular progression right guys so so far we've covered five ways of using the dominant seventh chord first off with the authentic or the perfect cadence five going to one then we've looked at well just combining uh just uh getting to know the difference between the major seventh chord and the dominant seventh chord so that i think is very important then we looked at using it in the most popular genre ever the blues so that's the 12 bar blues for you then we look at a line cliche movement which is just chromatically going down or chromatically going up and then lastly in this particular part we've looked at the funky dorian progression which is using the dorian scale a scale with a flat three and a flat seven with a raise six if you call it that and one minor going to four dominant seventh and then you do a turn around which is the b going to b flat which is your uh, six flat uh, dominant going to five dominant so a lot of dominant seventh chord so as this series is it's all about getting you to know that chord the dominant seventh chord hopefully you really digest the sound of that chord or the flavor of that chord and um, <clears throat> Let's move on to another part now where we'll digest it even more. And I'll be giving you five more ways of uh, really noticing the chord and trying to get it into your system. So I hope you found this lesson useful. Again, this is Jason here from Nathaniel. Uh, do consider subscribing to our channel. Turn on that bell. And all of these notes are available in a booklet which will be available on our Patreon. You can just check that out. It'll have this entire series, all the 10 ways of identifying, listening, and applying the dominant seventh chord. It's all waiting for you on Patreon. And um, do, do consider liking the video, hitting that button, um, share the video with your musician friends. Why can't they also enjoy this, isn't it? Um, it's an amazing chord. I will see you guys in the next one, or rather you will see me in the next one. Cheers.